and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. I'm back in the UK after my epic trip to Austria in my new GT3. Uh, there are a few new subscribers on the channel, so welcome. This is one of my other cars, kind of my daily, a Jaguar F-Type R that I nicknamed Truffle because it's brown. Uh, last week on the channel, I test drove an off-road sports car, the new 911 Dakar. Well, this week, test driving another off-road vehicle, but a slightly more appropriate one, a 4x4, the new Ineos Grenadier, a vehicle that supposedly picks up where the original Defender, original G-Wagon, original Land Cruiser left off before they all became cushy school-run SUVs. So yes, I'm heading a couple of hours outside of London to go and find the Grenadier. And so here it is, the new Ineos Grenadier. It's a bit weird for me standing next to this car because I've been talking about it on the podcast for like 18 or 24 months and yeah, now it's here and about to jump in it and go for a drive. It's kind of cool. <laughs> now, yeah, Ineos might be a new name to the world of automotive, but you've probably heard of them before because, well, firstly, they part own the Mercedes F1 team, but they also own or sponsor teams in cycling, sailing, football, rugby, etc. Also, during the COVID pandemic, their hand sanitizer was everywhere. So yeah, it might be a new car company, but it's not exactly a startup. It's got serious funding, serious intent, and proper people have been involved in this project so far. So there's a lot of promise for this rugged looking thing. Now, just in case you've never heard of the Grenadier before, let me tell you about a few facts and stats. As I mentioned in the intro, this 4x4 is supposed to pick up the mantle of Ultimate Off-Roader. Like I was just saying, it's designed, engineered and built to world-class standards for those needing a stripped back, no-nonsense workhorse, but still with the comfort, safety, refinement that we all expect from today's cars. Uh, it has a ladder frame chassis, solid beam axles and locking differentials. The engine is actually from BMW and it's only available as an automatic. Uh, the steering is actually quite unique for a modern car. It's a recirculating ball steering layout, which helps reduce wheel shudder and steering wheel pull when off-roading, but does give quite a lot of pain, a bit of a numb feeling on the road. Now, one thing I learned during the briefing for this vehicle is they're about a million ways you can accessorize it. It's the ultimate adventure 4x4. There are belt lines along the side, which can take up to 40 kilos of equipment each. There are power points all on the roof. There's even a pull down table from the rear door, perfect for resting your bacon roll and cappuccino on at an off-road event, or more realistically, somewhere to mount a stove when out camping. Now, for some reason, I'm also obsessed with its rear load space. Not something I usually get hung up on, but something I just think it does so much better than its competitors. It is cavernous. The two-seat version has a capacity of over 2,000 litres can accommodate a standard Euro pallet. It's the fact, though, for me that with both rear doors open, access to the space is super easy. And with the materials used back here, the water guards, the washable surface, it makes it the perfect place to put muddy dogs or chuck a mountain bike, etc. There are so many more details I could tell you, but let's crack on and get behind the wheel. Oh, now first things first, that is a very satisfying door thud. It is exactly how you want a door to sound when you're closing it on a vehicle like this. Well, that's a very positive start. <laughs> now, as I said at the beginning of this video, this vehicle is, well, really utilitarian. It was sort of built with a primary purpose, to go off-road, really to go so far off-road that other modern day 4x4s couldn't keep up. But today in this video, I'm not really going to go off-road in it. <laughs> There's two main reasons for that. Firstly, because, well, obviously this car's going to be good at the off-road stuff. That's, that's what it was built to do and to achieve. And I, I have driven it off-road. I actually drove a little bit off-road here today, but also I've spoken to lots of other people that have driven it off-road. It, it's fantastic. It makes what looks like really challenging situations super easy. But there's another reason why I don't really want to spend my day off-road is because, let's face it, these days, most people use their cars in lots of different ways, not for just one primary purpose. Heck, people are dailying Porsche GT4 RSs. They're mad, but they're doing it. And so even if you are a farmer that lives on a very muddy farm or someone in the middle of the African desert or the Australian outback, and you will spend most of your time driving this thing in pretty precarious situations, it's going to be the odd time when you are going to want to head to the supermarket or to visit family or to go to a coffee shop or to load up with stuff. I don't know, real world scenarios. So yeah, 
Lovely sounding door thump included. Let's power up, get out of Millbrook, this top secret testing facility, and see what this car is really all about. This 4x4, I should stop calling it a car because it is this a proper 4x4. Manual key! Oh, what's going on? I've come about 60 miles west to the Cotswolds. I kind of thought this would be the perfect place to test drive this vehicle. I think it's going to fit in perfectly. And I think this is where many Grenadiers could end up next to Bentleys. That's what I love about the Cotswolds. It's real old money, like old money. And I think old money still have old shaped defenders or beaten up Toyota Hiluxes and things like that. And they're the kind of people that would probably be seriously considering or have already placed an order for a Grenadier because they're going to need a vehicle like this. They can tackle their farms or the 20 mile lanes to their estates. You know, you know what I'm saying? Now, having spent time now behind the wheel and starting to figure it out, I've got a few things to tell you. Uh, first, I think it's important for me to say that I've spent a lot of time over the years uh, in, an, in an original Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, but more so in the old shape Defender. My dad's had a few old shape Defenders over the years, and at one point, I dailied a 1994 Defender 90. I actually used it for my band. Some of you might have forgotten I was in a, I was in a band. <laughs> we used to load up all the amps and the equipment and the drums and stuff like that and use the Defender to cart the kit between gigs. And you know what, it was kind of cool. I sort of loved it, but the minute I got onto a big road, I well, I was terrified because the thing would shake and rattle and it top speed was probably about 40 miles an hour, at which point it was doing six MPG. It was fairly miserable, but, but sometimes it was cool and it looked the bomb. Uh, this thing, whilst of course very different, shares a lot of the same architecture, let's say, a lot of the same ethos as the original Defender. Uh, so therefore, some of the characteristics are similar, and I'm going to use my experience in original Land Cruiser and Old Shape Defender to kind of judge this thing. And so far, so good. The lovely BMW B58 engine, which I think we're all so familiar with, three litre, six cylinder. It's just, it's just great. I think in this car it's got like 245 horsepower and I tell you what like if you want to crack on it does pick up and go like it hasn't I thought it was gonna feel slow it hasn't felt that slow but it's not a vehicle that you want to drive fast you want to just poodle along and, well watch the world go by and you really can do that because the visibility in this thing is fantastic which obviously really helps you when you're off-roading but out here it's just, it's just nice you've got these lovely glass canopies those pop off by the way so you can have that kind of opened up but yeah it's, it's a very nice place to sit we'll, we'll get into it more a little bit later because i need to pull over to really talk you through this car i need to stop because there's so much functionality i think what's really interesting about this vehicle is how much they've thought of every little kind of detail that you might need or want if you're seriously off-roading it does mean that here on tarmac roads there's not a lot of things to play with you, you just you get in you put it in d for drive and and you go there's no sport mode there's no flappy panels can't firm up the suspension or open a sports exhaust it's, it's just a vehicle to get from point a to point b and for me point b is well a fairly familiar spot for new car test drives on this channel regular viewers who know your UK geography, me being in the Cotswolds, testing a new car, you probably know where I'm heading. But there's a real reason why I'm heading there. We'll get into that in a little bit. So yeah, for now, it's gonna keep enjoying. Waddling along these Cotswolds lanes in this Grenadier. So yes, I've come to Dalesford, one of my favourite farm shops in the UK, and a popular stop when I'm doing these new car test drives on the channel. But there is a reason why I bought the Grenadier here to Dalesford. It's because I think Dalesford clientele are Grenadier customers. Because I worry that Ineos have made a bit of a misstep when it comes to the pricing of this car. I always thought it was going to be like 50 grand, which is still a lot, like a ton. But in a world where 
all cars are getting more and more expensive. It kind of felt right-ish. However, this, the car that I'm driving right now, 70 grand, 70, which I think takes it away from your everyday farmers and puts it, yeah, much more as a rival to lots of other SUVs that are knocking around here. This is, this is for a wealthy estate owner, not someone just with a five pigs trying to make a living. So I worry that that's, that's a bit, a bit off. And at 70 grand, some of, some of these materials, mm. but we'll come back to that. For now, I want to head inside and get that coffee and pork pie. See if I can capture anyone's reactions as they walk past, because I've already been getting quite a lot of looks. And then, yeah, talk you through some of the super interesting and exciting functionality of this vehicle, which does add value, which does add value. I've moved around the corner. I've got a bit self-conscious doing these pieces to camera, one in front of the Dales Fit entrance. And this thing was getting a lot of attention. I don't know if the camera's picked up on it, but every time I looked over, people were kind of gawping at it. Helps that it's bright blue. <laughs> but as I say, I do also think people going to Dalesford, potentially Grenadier customers, they probably knew what this thing was. Like, well, darling, it's a Grenadier, let's go have a look. Whereas if you took it to a city centre, maybe not as many people would recognise it. I'm making assumptions there, but I feel like I would be right. Potentially. Um, I do think this thing looks good. I think the looks have been a bit divisive, a bit Marmite. Some people love it, some people don't. But yeah, I think well, I think it looks good. I think it looks appropriate is what I would say. Um, but I find the interior the more interesting part. And um, this kind of jumbo jet setup is just cool. Uh, and the reason why all these things are big and chunky and thing is because if you're off adventuring and you've got gloves on or you're mucky and you're dirty or you want to focus on the road or river or mountain in front of you, you can just reach down and push things and grab things. You don't have to get lost in a screen like so many other new vehicles. This is the optional saddle brown leather, which is supposed to like bed in with time so that every wheel is different or unique to its owner. But this looks weird because there's nothing else really brown in here apart from a few other touch elements like three so three brown things and it looks a bit maroon i just don't like it so just i wouldn't option that personally the screen is good apple carplay all that kind of stuff cool that you've got this big old compass here that also shows your altitude sound system seems pretty good i think i already mentioned the visibility is fantastic as a place to sit it's so nice i feel far enough back that i'm i'm getting advantage of this and and the views around me but i don't feel disconnected from the front of the car if that makes sense Oh, I'm sure it's been talked about in other Grenadier coverage, but the toot button. You know, when you're creeping around in the countryside or out and about, you often have to let people know that you're there or that you're coming. And how many times have you tried to beep a friend, like little beep beep, I'm here, let's go, beep beep, and you've actually gone bah, and like really scared them. So they brought this in to kind of let people know that you're coming, and it's actually a different horn. I, do I need to turn the ignition on? Let's do that anyway, just in case. So let's say I just want to let my mate know. That's all right, it's a bit intense, but then... A little tiny one, a little beep beep, a little softer one. It's nice. Um, but talking about horns, this key, lock and unlock, took me two seconds to realise that. I pushed this one because that seems like a more normal lock on a modern car. Anyway, let's have this coffee. Um, and then think about where we go from here. I need to start heading back. I've probably got another 75 or 80 miles back to where I need to drop this car off. So by the end of the day, we're going to have done around 250 miles which is a lot, um, but I kind of want to get a couple of shots just of it in a scenic set situation. So yeah, let's go and find that somewhere, shall we? This could go horribly wrong, people. <laughs> this, this is the Grenadier life that I'm really here for. Uh, this vehicle has proven to be very capable in pretty much every scenario I've thrown at it today. But I have realised as the day has gone on that to enjoy this car to the, to the fullest, you've got to use it for what it was designed to do. It's like a GT4 RS or a McLaren Senna. Yes, you could go to the supermarket in them, but it's stupid to do so. If you really want to enjoy them, take them on track. Take this thing off track. Because this moment right now, just bashing along this dirty, muddy, wet country lane and stopping, climbing up onto the roof, sipping my coffee whilst I look over sunny Cotswold fields. This is the best moment of the day for me. And I wish I could be doing this in somewhere even more exotic. I don't even know where, but just out in the world. 
This thing feels like it could take it. Sitting up here, actually, I know I'm totally fine because the roof can withstand up to 150 kilos. If you have the additional roof rack, up to 400 kilos. You could load up a tent on here, just go and be gone. Into the wild for like months on end, just disappear. I love this ladder. There's two parts sort of doors, super functional. Everything's functional. You can hang things off here. They've just thought of everything. So therefore, going to Dalesford in it, you know, fine you can, but as I say, it's like taking your McLaren Senna to dinner in central London. Sure, cool, well done you, but a bit pointless. Well, as the sun sets behind me, I need to wrap things up because my time with this Grenadier is very nearly over. I'm almost back at Millbrook, which is where I'm gonna be handing this thing back to the team at Ineos. I'm not really allowed to film within the Millbrook proving ground without very specific permissions. So many manufacturers use that place to test cars that sometimes haven't even been announced yet. So if you go in there with cameras rolling, security don't find it very funny. I don't think they have guns, but if they had guns, they'd draw them. They'd take it that seriously. So yeah, let's, let's wrap things up before I get back to the entrance gates. And actually, I'm struggling to wrap things up. You know, I've spent a lot of time with this car today, 250 odd miles, God knows how many hours behind the wheel. I feel like I do understand it. I actually feel like I've really bonded with it. Heck, if I lived in the countryside, if I lived in the Cotswolds, I think I'd have one of these. It's, it's perfect for the job. But then I was thinking, what about my dad? He does live out there and he's always had old defenders. Could I convince him to swap his defender for one of these? I'm not sure I could because, well, firstly, the price is a lot of money, this thing. But also, because it shares that same architecture, the driving dynamics are pretty similar. This, this engine, this gearbox, fantastic. This thing does feel more sturdy, but it's, it's an old school driving sensation. One that really comes into its own off-road, on-road, it's kind of, you know, a little dated, I suppose. If you've got one of these coming, I don't think you're going to be disappointed because I'm assuming you've ordered one because not many other new 4x4s are this focused, do what this vehicle can do. It's been a really cool and a really fun day and uh, not a very usual me kind of day. I don't do a lot of off-roading kind of content and obviously I haven't done much off-roading today, but we've had a blast. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, huge thanks to Ineos for the invite. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you have liked it and stay subscribed because next week we're back in supercars, kind of the ultimate supercar. Uh, anyway, I'll catch up with you very soon. Bye-bye.